Hey everyone, today we are starting the multiplayer expansion for Final Fantasy XV, Comrades. And I've started a new walkthrough for this one because it's basically a new game. So we're just going to treat it as a new game and give it a new walkthrough. So, let's jump into it. Comrades uses an autosave feature to save your progress. You can create and save up to 8 individual avatars in your file. Your progress, inventory, and photo album will be shared across all avatars. Okay, and let me just make sure subtitles are on. It should have the same options as my regular game, and it seems it does. So, begin. Your online ID and avatar name will be visible to other players when scanning comrades or communicating via fast chat or voice chat. If other players choose to share or stream their gameplay, your online ID and avatar name may also be visible via those services. I don't care, that's fine with me. Your server name and the online icon will display in the upper left. Your server name and online icon will disappear when you go offline. To reconnect, return to the title screen and select begin. So if I lose my connection, I can still play Comrades. Half a year has passed since Noctis and his royal retinue set sail for the western continent. News of Niflheim's demise floods the airwaves, but no word has been heard from the Crown Prince. With no light to guide them, refugees from the Crown City and other parts of Lucis now gather in Lestalem, hoping to move forward as one. Hear me, defenders of the crown. The power of kings goes with you, and with power comes a duty to your kingdom. Your body is a vessel for the blessings of the Stone of Lucis. Your blade, a ray of hope cleaving a path for the future king. But let it be known, your transgressions have not been forgotten. Once the true king awakens, and the light is restored to this world, only then shall you be forgiven and set free from the burdens you bear. Rise and shine. <laughs> you're probably wondering what you're doing here. Your memories are hazy, but you remember that you are a, sur a surviving member of the King's Glaive, the late Lucian Monarch Special Task Force. Okay, so we can make a male character or a female character. We're going to go with a male character. And we're going to start with his face. So you pick two ancestors. It says your features will be generated based on your ancestors' faces. So for the first ancestor, I'm going to pick this guy. And for the second ancestor, I'm going with this one. And that gets me a decent starting point. I like that. So um, then we're going to do a facial blend. And we're going to go down to 30. And that's going to... Make it so the Ancestor A's features come in a little bit more than B. And I like that. That's good. And then Skin Tone Blend. We're going to blend that down to 40. And I think that looks pretty good. Okay, next up is his hair. Not that many styles to choose from. Um, I like the one that is currently selected. So we're going to keep that. Features. We're going to give him a beard. I'm gonna go with this one right here. There we go, getting a little bit closer to what I want. Uh, eyebrows, I'll keep that as default. Those are the options there. Eyelashes, default sounds good. Uh, I can give them scars, I'm gonna pass on that. Face paint, uh, what's interesting, there's no face paint tat or tattoos. Um, so I'm not sure if that's just something they haven't added yet, or perhaps I need to unlock it by playing. But either way, no options there. For the voice, most of these voices are terrible in my opinion. Like, uh, we'll just pick one at random. Uh, three. For hearth and home. So, not very, uh, impressed with that, but I do like voice six. For hearth and home. 
so we're gonna go with that. Uh, figure. We're gonna make his height the same as mine. I'm six feet tall. Uh, wait, we'll keep that at zero. Head is good, neck, torso. Actually, torso... Let's make him skinny. We'll make him somewhat like me. I'm a skinny guy. We'll go with 25. Um, also, um... Got little baby arms, so we're gonna crank that down a little bit. Upper arms, 25. Uh, forearms, they're gonna be 25 as well. Uh, hips. We'll knock those down to 30. Let's see what it was like. It Yeah, see, that's normal. He's going down to 30. Stomach. Um, let's knock that down to 25. So you can see his stomach retracting. I don't want zero, that's a little, a little extreme, but 25 seems good. And then legs, we're gonna beef up his legs a little bit. We're gonna go up to 60 for those. Make him a runner. Alright, looking good. Uh, attire, you really only get one choice, and I really like the choice. So, we're putting on all of the uh, attire it gives me. And it's fancy, I like it. Well, those aren't so fancy, but they still work. Got some gloves there. Uh, outfit, nothing there. Not sure if that's another thing that will unlock or uh, just hasn't been added yet. Same with accessories. Uh, color. Uh, skin, we'll keep him there. I'm much wider, but he doesn't need to be. Uh, lips good. Just different colors you can pick. Eyes I want to change. We're going to make those somewhere between a blue and a green, like a turquoise. Maybe like that? That's not bad. Let's go with that. Okay. Uh, hair. We're going to make it brown. Like a dark brown. Right there, that looks good to me. Uh, no tips colors. Eyebrows are good. Highlights now. Um, you can change the colors of your uh, attire. And I suck at doing that, so I'm not going to mess with it. I think it looks good as it is, but you can change each individual color. Or color parts, rather. So if you want to change those up, you can. The same color palette, same with the legs, the shoes, and the gloves. Uh, facial structure, you can change all of this stuff. I like where it is, so I'm not going to screw with any of this, but lots of options if you want to adjust the face. And we've got cheeks, mouth, and jaw as well. I'll show you those options really quick. Just in case you're interested. But, I like the way he came out. I'm a fan. So, I'm all done here. Let's go ahead and finish and get into the game. And I need a name. I'm gonna use Lasser. No clue? Don't sweat it. You escaped with something more precious than your memories. Your life. First of all, you're a glaive. Just like me. The king lends us his power. We fight to protect him. Well, fought. The king himself's long gone. His power remains, though, so we gotta put it to good use. See that up ahead? That's the last bastion of mankind. And it's the King's Glaive's job to keep her safe from harm. <laughs> Better enjoy the sunshine while it lasts. It'll be gone before you know it. Only other light left in this world is the kind we make ourselves. And as you may or may not remember, we play a big role in that process. Let's hope that jogged your memory. All of the Stalin's counting on us, Glaives. Demons ahead, get ready! Great. 
Another bump in the road. You and me will smooth it out. Let's move! Glaives function somewhat differently than Noctis and his pals, but their fundamental controls remain the same. King's Glaive Combat Tutorial, Regenerating Health Glaives cannot use items to restore HP in the field. Instead, hold L2 and press Circle to cast a Curative Spell. Curative Spells restore HP to the caster and all comrades positioned within its range of effect. Casting Spells Hold L2 and press Circle to cast a Curative Spell, or press Square to cast an Offensive Spell. Both types of magic cost MP to cast. Projecting Barriers Hold L1 to protect or to project a protective barrier at the expense of MP. Comrades positioned behind the barrier will also be protected from enemy attacks. And then performing chain warps. Block an incoming attack with L1 to deliver a counter. A successful counter strike will create an opening for a chain warp. Chain warp strikes with your comrades to deal incredible uh, incredible damage. All right. And we got the Warriors of Light quest, head to town. We got some goblins. Warp strike in there. So let me show you some of the stuff. Let me cast a spell. Offensive. Right there. You can see it's quick. And it uses my MP. That's my protective barrier. Protecting from attacks. Draining my MP though. And then I can dodge and warp strike and do the normal stuff. So warp strike into him. I've got some daggers too, I'll play with those. I can also point warp up to uh, I assume regenerate MP. Oh the daggers are quick! I like it. Not doing a whole lot of damage though, are they? Offensive spell. Whoa. That was interesting. Oh, I pressed the wrong button. That's why. It's like, what was that? Right, let me go back to the katana. I like that better. That looks good enough to eat. Uh, what? <laughs> there was supposed to be a big flying thing that came by, but it didn't. Oh, it's off there. Uh, rare ingredients. Oh, whoops. I missed that. Anyways, uh, we have some food here. If you pick it up, you can see I now have meat. I'm not really... Oh, okay. I see. It gave me some buffs, but it doesn't list the buffs. But whatever. I got some meat, and it's one star. Apparently got four of it. Oh, hi! No, oh, missed the block. I missed something there. Hold L2 and do something to something or other. She's getting beat up. Let's give her an offensive spell! Watch yourself. No telling what else is waiting on the road ahead. Right, let's see, what did it say about holding L2 and R2? My, I don't know. R2 targets my uh, allies if I want to cast a curative spell or something like that on them. Oh, Miles, what are you doing in there? You're going to piss her off. Here we go. Offensive spell. Oh, initiated a chain warp. So now you want to just chain uh, warp strike as much as you can. And it'll do some massive damage, although I got myself into stasis. Can I... Point warp? Apparently not. We can keep them out forever. Crazy. We're on the 
almost there. We'll take him down and head into town. Ready? Let's do it. Spell! Ooh, that was good. He is just murdering these enemies. Let's get with this katana. Better save that for later. But don't take more than you can carry. In times like these, we gotta be fair about our food. All right, so you can either keep the meat you have, or you can grab the fish. Uh, there's six fish, and there was only four meat, so I'll take the fish. Need a hand? Marshal. Save the formalities for later. We've got bigger fish to fry right now. Love you. Everyone, No, oh, I know what that is. Get out of there. Oh. What we glaze can do. Alright, well, I guess I may as well show you a curative spell, right? Let's get in there and heal my friends. Oh, I gotta hold it. Alright, no, not hold it. Never mind, just wasting my MP. Whoa! Alright, one of my friends is almost dead. This one. Let's heal him. There we go. Yeah, beat up a little bit. Oh, look out! This way. And hurry. Won't be long till more of them show up. Healing! You're welcome. Oh, here you go. Wait, why is it. Hmm. Hurry it up. Said it was healing them, but their health bars weren't going up. Maybe they reduced my maximum HP. Although it's not showing that. Open up! It's the Marshal! Open up! Well, go on. I like their door. It's a car. Be glad you made it inside. Lestalem will henceforth serve as your base of operations. Rendezvous with online comrades outside the outpost. You are a capable combatant. Everyone here in Lestalem is counting on you to keep them safe. Man, they just showed up. Why do I have all this responsibility? Alright. Anyways, uh, we completed our first quest. We got the new one, Descent into Darkness. Uh, and let me show you some stuff. So if we press in the touchpad, you can see we have our gear here. I can equip up to four items just like Noctis, um, but all I have at the moment is a level one katana and level one daggers. You can see the stats at the bottom. Nothing uh, for these other uh, slots. However, look at this. They added shuriken's. So that's new. And clubs. I don't remember if they had clubs before. I mean, they had club weapons, but I think they were under a different category. But anyways, they have clubs. Clubs and shuriken's. Uh, under items, we have all of the item-y stuff. Got your weapons, your treasures, uh, phrase books, which is the... Uh, uh, guide stuff I was given at the beginning. Uh, avatar items, clothing, and key items. Uh, and then there's chat. Um, apparently I can do like... Oh, I see. These give me different... Never mind, I thought these did something else. So these give me chat things that I can use. I'll keep you healed all together now, all kinds of stuff like that. That's interesting. I don't know how I would use that 
during a fight, but there's probably an easier way to do it. Uh, and then we have info. Uh, updates, that'll take you to a website that will just give you a... Um, that'll list all the updates that the uh, comrades has gotten. Uh, we're not going to do that. Uh, we have information on the characters. Uh, first one is Nix Ulrich. Native son of Galad, who fought alongside the local resistance before arriving in Insomnia to serve Regis in the Kingsglaive. His affinity for the royal magic and his epic exploits in combat have earned him the moniker of Hero among his peers. Tasked by his king to see the Lady Lunafreya and the King of the Lucii to safety, a dire situation forced the Glaive Hero to don the ring himself and channel its power at the cost of his life. We have Lunafreya Nux Fleure. Before accepting the sacred charge of the Oracle, the daughter of House Fleure was born Princess of Tenebrae, where she forged a bond with Prince Noctis in her youth. In time, the two were betrothed. Though she was to meet her fiancé in Alticia, circumstances carried her into the Crown City ahead of the peace signing between Lucis and Niflheim, and she was taken hostage. Rescued by Nyx and escorted outside the city by Libertus, the Oracle roamed the world to forge covenants with the Six, slain by the Imperial Chancellor upon the altar of the Hydraean in Alticia. Her final act was to deliver the Ring of the Lucii to Noctis. We have Cor Leonis, a valiant protector who stood beside Regis during the King's journey 30 years prior, and continued to serve his liege marshalling the Lucian Crown's Guard. The Immortal's heroic feats in battle make him the stuff of legend, and for Noctin his closest friends, an invaluable ally in the field. He now bands with his crowns guard together, or he now bands his crowns guard together with the hunters, the remnants of the Kingsglaive, and rebel soldiers to stand as mankind's last line of defense against the demons. While he had initially set aside resources to find and rescue Noctis, he later broke up the search parties in order to commit to defending outposts, a decision that was met with misgivings from those who held faith in the gospel of the true king. Even after Regis' magic has faded, the Marshal remains unmatched in combat, though he now dedicates more of his time to training his fighters than he does to fighting on the front lines himself. Regis Lucis Calum, 113th monarch in the line of Lucis and father of Noctis. For three decades, the wise and merciful ruler held back the imperial onslaught, maintaining the wall with his royal light and shedding it upon outsiders so that they might defend the crown city thus forging the King's Glaive. That weapon would eventually be plunged into his back, as traitorous glaives colluded with the Empire to undermine the peace, sabotage the wall, and assassinate the King. As the wall fell, so would the crown, and so too would Lucis. As the King passed, the gift of light faded from the glaives, yet in time, the light would return. And then we have documents about the King's Glaive. Special task force of the late Lucian monarch, the King's Glaive served King Regis until his untimely end. He lent them use of his magic. They, in turn, lent him their prowess in combat. Together, they fought to defend the kingdom and all who would do her harm. Though indebted to their liege, not every glaive pledged their loyalty. On the eve of the treaty signing ceremony between Lucis and Niflheim, a faction of rebels conspired with Imperial operatives to sabotage the peace proceedings. The Empire set their scheme into motion the following day, and the royal delegation was all but helpless against the Imperial ambush. The chaos that ensued spread across or spread outside the Citadel, setting Insomnia ablaze and sending all hopes of an armistice up in smoke. The politics that motivated the insurrection that day hold little relevance at, pre at present. Our entire world has been overrun by demons and plunged into night eternal. The surviving glaives seem to recognize the severity of our situation, and have put past grievances aside in order to fight together, no longer for hearth and home, but for the well-being of all mankind. On swordsmanship, charge attacks, pause in the middle of a combo to fall back momentarily and gather strength, then unleash a powerful strike. Uh, there's parrying. When an enemy is about to strike, you can block the attack to create an opening and unleash a powerful counter. Uh, we have chain warps. Parrying certain enemies' attacks will create an opening. String together warp strikes with your comrades while the enemy is incapacitated to deal incredible damage. Blade warping. Hold R2 to target a comrade, then press circle to warp to their position and help them recover a small amount of HP. 
So I haven't done that yet. I'll need to play with that. On spellcasting. The power of kings allows you to cast a variety of spells by expending MP. Curative spell, heal. Hold L2 and press circle to restore a small amount of HP to you and your nearby allies. We know that. Offensive spell, blast. Hold L2 and press square to fire a short range shockwave that sends foes flying. Some arms will allow you to cast a variety of elemental spells as well. On armaments, katanas. Armaments boosting or boasting excellent reach and mobility. Tilting the left stick allows the wielder to move about the field while attacking. Maces, powerful armaments that can destroy appendages with ease. Holding square allows the wielder to channel their strength into a devastating charge attack. Pole arms. Armaments that allow the wielder to move around the field with ease. Ideal for fast-paced battles. Daggers. Paired armaments efficient for striking swiftly. Damage output increases with each successive strike. Crossbows. Long-ranged armaments able to target enemies from afar. Holding square allows the wielder to channel their strength into a devastating charge attack. Shields. Defense-oriented armaments that boost HP and vitality. Reduce damage taken from enemy attacks. And shuriken's armaments able to strike enemies in the air or from afar. Damage output increases when attacking at closer range. All right, and that's everything I wanted to show you for now. So we're all done here. Thank you for watching, and I will see you next time.